as and I pray that your spirit is ready to receive as we discuss. Amen. 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 So, so can anyone um off the top of your head, you know, define sanctification and holiness? When you think about sanctification and holiness, what comes to mind? Anybody? Sanctification is being set apart for God's work. And okay. holiness, holiness is um, living a life that is pleasing to God. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Holiness is a state um, that we ought to live in, and the sanctification is a process of getting to that state. Okay. Do we have anyone else? Thank you for that. So you, might have to, you might have to call on people. Something similar to what Pastor Cash said. So sanctification is like the process of being holy. And then holiness is like um the 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 the, the a state of being then. All right, then thanks. You guys are so well intelligent. So thanks for the response, guys. All right, so when you look at holiness, and holiness is unknown, and it is the state of being holy, as per Pastor Cash and Sister Trish. And holiness is commonly defined as being dedicated to, separated, or set apart for a religious purpose. So the, the adjective form of holiness is the word holy. And the Hebrew word for, for holy is kadosh. I pray that I um, said it in the right way. Mm -hmm. And it yes, means that is sac sacred, holy, holy one, saint, set apart. And I want you to zone in on that word. Hmm. Set up. Hmm. The Greek word for holy is hagios. And it means different. Likeness of nature with the Lord. Different from the world. Okay. So of things which on account of some connection with God. Possess a certain distinction and claim to reverence as places sacred to God which are not to be profaned. Places sacred to God which are not to be profaned. Mm -hmm. Set apart from mm -hmm. anything that mm -hmm. will defile the things that has been dedicated to God. Clear? Yes. So, yes. sanctification, no. On the other hand, <laughs> is an act of sanctifying, which means to wash, cleanse, or set aside for a special purpose. Mm. To sanctify someone or something is to set that person or thing apart for the use intended by God. Let's see how closely related holiness and uh, sanctification is. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> so the verb form of sanctification is sanctify. And the Hebrew word for sanctify is kadash. So let me go back. Yes, please. Holiness or holy is the adjective. 
which describe a thing. And sanctification is the verb, which is the action. You see that? Yes. Yep. Hebrew word for sanctify is kadash, which is to consecrate, sanctify, prepare, dedicate, be hallowed. And we look right here, we see be holy in that corner. Mm -hmm. Sanctification basically is to prepare, to prepare mm -hmm. yourself to be holy. My God. Hmm. The Greek word, Greek word for, for sanctify is hag, hagiazo, to render or acknowledge or to be venerable or hollow, mm. to separate from profane things and dedicate to God. Consecrate things to God, dedicate people to mm. God. So you see the similarity, holiness and sanctification. Therefore, yes. whenever a believer is sanctified, they are set apart for the purpose or will of God. So to be sanctified is to be made holy. Mm. Therefore, in order to be labeled as holy, something has to be done. Oops. Sanctification is mm. required. Can we look at Leviticus 11, verse 44, King James Version, please? Okay, okay. For one to be labeled as holy, you have to be sanctified. And you said you only want the King James? Yes, the King James Version. Okay. Nobody don't have it yet? I I have it. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourself, and ye shall be holy. For I am holy, neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. Hmm. You shall therefore what sanctify yourself, sanctify and yourself. ye shall be what? Holy. Holy. Yeah. So in that in that um particular chapter, God was giving Moses some instruction as to what to eat and what not to eat. So basically, God is saying that you guys are separated by me for me. So you should so your diet should be different from the other nations. Mm -hmm. You shall separate yourself from these things that will defile you. Then you will be holy Amen. as the Lord God Amen. is holy. Amen. 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 So, so now we are going to delve deeper into sanctification. Understand who or what can be sanctified. Who does the sanctifying? Different aspects of sanctification. What are involved in the sanctification process? The importance of sanctification. And what are the ways someone can be sanctified? Okay? Yes. Sir. yes. So, so somebody can, so can somebody tell me who or what can be sanctified off the top of your head? Uh, us humans. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I was gonna say a place, person, or thing. Great, thanks for that. <laughs> Those who come to Christ are sanctified. Those who come to Christ are sanctified. Yes.
<clears throat> Do you want these scriptures in the King James? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Listen, I don't have no King James. First Corinthians. Uh, sorry, go ahead, sister. Two. I was going to say First Corinthians 1, 2. Under the church of God, which is at Corinth, <clears throat> to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that is in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Amen. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Acts 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen. Yes, so, so, so for those who come to Christ are sanctified. Mm -hmm. So you are sanctified by faith in Christ. Bible said those who call upon the Lord shall be saved. Amen. 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 So Amen. therefore, Amen. who come to him has been labeled as sancti sanctified. Amen. 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 Therefore, you cannot be a sinner and say you are sanctified. You have to first come under the umbrella. You have to first receive Christ. Then and there you are sanctified, set apart for him. Go ahead, Mama P. Oh, sorry, just a shave. Like, th th there's a black bar, and I'm unable to see what's on the other end of it. So I don't know if you can remove that, please. A black bar? Oh, there it goes. Oh. It's clear. Yeah, it's on. Sorry. Oh, it comes back. Yeah. All right, go ahead. So, as Pastor Cash said, what is it, Pastor Cash? A, a place, a thing? Person, place, person, I think. Person, place, I think. So, a day as well can be sanctified. Can you read Genesis 2, verse 3, please? Genesis 2, 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Amen. 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 So after... God did all his work. He set aside mm. this day for rest. Amen. You know, like in the kitchen and your utensils, and you know, you color code your knives. <laughs> and you know, the green, the, the, the knives with the green head are set, set apart just for cutting the vegetables. Mm -hmm. mm. Knives with the red head are set apart yeah. for cutting the meat, the Eat. poultry. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So God said, this day is for me to rest. I will do no work. Yeah. Remember the Sabbath day saints to keep mm -hmm. it. Yep. Mm. Holy in a sense that you are set apart from anything that will defile you. Mm. Clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, don't do this, please. Don't do this. Structures and objects. Hmm. Can someone read Exodus 30, verses 26 through to 29, King James Version, please? Exodus 30, um, 26 to 29. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith and the ark of the testimony. 
and the table and all his vessels and the candlestick and his vessels and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels and the laver and Love. his foot, laver mm -hmm. and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. Amen. 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 So, so, so these... So these um, objects were sanctified to be used, set apart to be used only in the tent of meeting. Mm -hmm. So they cannot take take out this if they have a basin in the if they if if they don't have a basin at home, yeah. Mm. And 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 they want to use a basin. I say, oh, let me go to church and use it. Borrow it. That is basically our borrowing. That is basically defiling these objects because they were already set apart for ministry in the temple. Amen. Wow. Amen. Go ahead, woman of God. I just wanted to, to ask, um, if you're going to answer this question further down in your study, you can ignore it for now, but um, does this apply to our current church now, um, as in the physical structure that we call church? um in terms of this level of sanctification um and knowing that when we come to you know when we when we like 29 says um whatsoever touches them shall be holy so once you come into that place you know there is a different sense of holiness and, and yeah 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 yes it does we are called to live a lifestyle of holiness and if we are going to the temple, the temple in itself where the saints of God will go and fellowship must be set apart for God. Mm. Amen. Amen. I just asked the question, sir, because of, you know, what I've observed even amongst us from time to time, um, you know, children running around in the temple, you know, different types of things you know yeah so so that is why i ask because i believe that in the old testament and obviously we understand the difference in terms of the dispensations with the old and new testaments um but i also believe that god has not changed as old as he is he has not changed and the principles um and the standards i believe remain the same, the same. you know over time right so I feel like, you know, we should make sure that we understand that even as we know it now as church, the temple that we go to to worship, we have to ensure that it remains sanctified. And when we mm -hmm. enter into that place, it's a completely different thing. Sometimes, you know, you see people enter into the house and they just operate any old type of way. Mm -hmm. Lack yeah. of reverence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As if the house is not sanctified unto God for his use. So yes. I just wanted to um to highlight that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Th thanks for that, woman of God. Hmm. And and we too have the opportunity to even sanctify anything. Things that we want to be set apart for God. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of us have our vehicle as altars and we pray and dedicate that vehicle to God, where God, this is the place where I will come and intercede, mm -hmm. fellowship and commune with your Holy Spirit. Oh my God. This wow. is set apart for wow. you and I. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, so now we must understand that Ooh, unsaved wow. brothers and sisters and friends that we have, we cannot lend them that vehicle for them to have sex in it or to yeah. create yeah. any ungodly music <laughs> that will defile that altar that you have mm -hmm. set apart. My God. God. My God. The bed or the room that you will sleep in. Jesus, that is it. Oh, God, this is my altar that Ooh. I 
has erected. This is my place, God, where oh. I come to mm. share from you. Oh, wow. The movies that we watch that will defile that altar. That is the reason why some of us will not hear from him. Oh, sir, why you choose violence tonight is what? <laughs> Man, I don't. Oh, oh um, I think it was Apostle's hand first. Yes, and then Sister oh, Terry. Oh, oh, my Tierra. God. Um, good night again. Um, you said something about the vehicle. Mm -mm -mm. But that same vehicle that is set apart that we blessed goes 120 miles on the highway. Oh my God. Oh, bring the law with the vehicle. <laughs> mm. And we are called to obey the law. Of the land. It breaks, it breaks the law. Um, it breaks the stop signs when we are driving it. But all these things are God understands. Um, I'm so, late for church. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I tried to. So you know, I, you know this this famous testimony. Oh, I I broke the stoplight, but the Lord answered my. But I prayed to the Lord, so the police doesn't give me a ticket. Wow. Um, you know, I go oh, hallelujah because that's a testimony. Grace. Actually, we should be embarrassed. Exactly. Um, but. It, it 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 just opens the door when you talk about sanctifying the things mm. you know that we have for God, but yet many times because yes, I love the idea you use the the example of giving our friends, mm. but we 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 oh, nice those of us who are sanctified ourselves yes, yes, use yes. the very thing that we have dedicated and set apart for God. We use it also to defile God. Yeah. And it is just interesting. It's just interesting mm -hmm. to know. My God. Yeah, when, some, mm -hmm. when somebody <laughs> back, uh, in the, the sanctified vehicle cursing them out. <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead, sister. I'm going to log off right now. I was just going <laughs> to yeah. thank you for that example because as you were saying that um you know, I, I recognize how many times that I have used and I have like said, God, this is my time of worship because I have like 45 minute drive. And so that's like my my worship and my, all, you know, a lot of times my time where I really seek God and pray with God. And I recognize that my car is filthy. I'm just being honest, but it's filthy. Um <laughs> in a physical sense like it's super filthy <laughs> um yeah. and i'm recognizing how it just it carries everything it carries like i just throw stuff in there all the time because there's space and yeah that was that was a little bit of a mic drop from me right there thank you for that just being honest you have, you have to remember that cleansing next cleansiness is next to godliness amen <laughs> and, and if if we set apart something for god the true and living god the god that is holy um there, there should be nothing present to defile that space yeah mm. whether physical or spiritual wow hmm. amen Amen. Um, Pastor Cash, Amen. you had a hand up. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking and, and I'm just gonna backtrack a little bit on this screen because you said something and, and I don't remember if you, you said something. You said those who come to Christ are sanctified, full stop. Mm -hmm. Yes. That bothers me a little bit. And the reason it bothers me is because and I got I get the scripture and I and I understand that. But the reason why it bothers me a little bit is because sanctification is a process. It's the process to becoming holy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have come to Christ and are yeah, walking yeah, with the I'm Lord, but they're not living a sanctified life. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at Romans chapter six. Um, and I don't want to read the entire passage. I'm trying to pick out a few verses. Verse 5 says, for if we have become one with him, which is Christ, 
by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. So I have come to Christ, sir, but I still gossip. Mm -hmm. I ain't sanctified. No. I've come to Christ, but I'm still cursing, not sanctified. Mm -hmm. We know that our old self was nailed to the cross, meaning the things that mm -hmm. I used to do, the habits I that I had, the, you know, all of those little things um, was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. And I'm going to jump down um, a little bit because we know, verse 9, because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. Um, 11, even so, consider yourself also dead to sin and your relation to it broken but alive to Christ, living in unbroken fellowship with him in Jesus Christ. So do not let sin, therefore, rule as king over your mortal bodies. So this is Paul talking to the people who have already come to Christ. Mm -hmm. But they were practicing or engaging in practices, you know, lewdness, drunkenness, lying, all of the different things, we know them, right? Yes. So that is why when you when you said it, those who come to Christ are sanctified, full stop. When you said it, I'm like, hmm, those who come to Christ are sanctified. Mm -hmm. I understand where you're going, but I did not want to leave it there with a full stop. Um, because as we have established that sanctification is a process, and a lot of times we hear that and we're like, oh, yes, it's a process. So, you know, I can still do what I'm doing because it's a process. That's not what it means here. No. You yeah. know, but but Paul is reminding us in Romans chapter 6 that we should not come. We should me. we should remember that our body that um our body was nailed to the cross and is dead. And so the appetite that I have for the things that don't please God. I don't care how simple it is that should also be dead yeah. mm -hmm. as a part of that process to becoming holy. So I just wanted to interject. Yeah, thank right, thanks for that woman I got. Mm -hmm. Who <laughs> does the sanctifying? Jesus, our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, mm -hmm. woman of God, mm -hmm. this is where I was coming from. Remember, um, I think in scripture I said you are a holy nation. Mm -hmm. It's not because of um, they're trying to live a sinless life. You guys are set apart for me, despite um, what you will do in the future. I have set apart you guys for my purpose. Okay. So I can read the scripture. Hebrews 13, 12 says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen. 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 John 17, 19 says, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. 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 What is the truth? The word of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Holy Spirit does the sanctifying. First Peter one verse two and second Thessalonians. That one should be read in the ESV. I noticed the ESV yes. is there. Yes, yes, okay. yes. 
First Peter one. <clears throat> According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Amen. Uh, thanks, Amen. Alan. Um, so, was it Hebrews 13, verse 12, we read earlier? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Hebrews 13, verse 12. Yes, sir. Want us to read that again? You want us to read it again, sir? Yeah, read it again. Uh, ten. I have it. Wherefore, wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Oh. Mm. Yes. So my version says, so Jesus also suffered outside the gate in, in order, order to, to sanctify, sanctify the people through his own blood. Yeah. So by the shedding of his blood, those who come to him has been sanctified, set apart for okay. him. Second Thessalonians. 2.13. 2.13. <clears throat> But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Yeah, so the, the, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, at work in us, will sanctify us by teaching us the truth. And the truth is the word of God Amen. that will in turn separate us from anything that will cause refinement to our temple. Amen. 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 We also play a vital role in sanctification through obedience to God's word. Amen. John 17. Can we use any version for these ones? Yes, you can use any version. Okay. I have John 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. We have James 1, 22. It says, but be doers of the word. Obey the message and not merely listeners to it. Betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning mm -hmm. contrary to the truth. Amen. 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 Yes, so sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is the truth. Right? Yes. So we should not, as individuals, only be hearers of the word that will sanctify us, but doers of what? we will read. Amen? Amen. Amen. It should lead to sanctification, setting apart ourselves. So, so some theologians and Bible scholars have come up with the aspects of sanctification. Positional sanctification. This is what um, I wanted to make reference to, Pastor Cash. Uh, yes, I, I follow you now. Possessed by every believer from the moment of his or her conversion. Mm -hmm. So once you come under that umbrella, mm -hmm. you're saying that I'm sanctified, I'm separate. separate. Yeah. Yes. Could you read Hebrews and Acts? Hebrews 10.10. 10. 
For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Amen. Amen. Acts 20, 32. It says, and now, brethren, I commit to you. I'm sorry. Now, brethren, I commit you to God. I deposit you in his charge and trusting you to his protection and care. And I commend you to the word of his grace to the commands and counsels and promises of his unmerited favor. It is able to build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance among all God's set-apart ones, those consecrated, purified, and transformed of soul. Amen. Amen. So this is like positional sanctification, where when you come under the umbrella, as I said earlier, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you have been given that position of a set apart individual. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians you one. First Corinthians. Okay. No, no, I don't have to read it. I think. We'll oh, okay. That. Okay. So progressive sanctification, the daily growth in grace, growing in maturity, becoming in practice more and more set apart for God's use. That involves the work of Holy Spirit in cooperation with our own submission to God. Amen. 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 All right. Yes. Amen. Uh, first Peter 1, 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for the sprinkling with his blood, may his may grace and peace be multiplied to you. We read that with you. Amen. Yes. Amen. So in a nutshell. Is the Holy Spirit at work within us, you know, teaching us the word, as I said earlier, for us to live a set apart life mm -hmm. from sin mm -hmm. and profane things. Amen? Amen. 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 So, we lose our position. Sorry. So we lose our position if we abandon the practical task of displaying Christ as best as we can each day. Hmm. So we look so we hmm. lose positional sanctification if we fail horribly at progressive sanctification. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Hmm. Amen. Make sense? Amen. Yeah, yeah explain that a little further for me, sir. So remember I said earlier, positional sanctification is when somebody comes to Christ. And progressive is like the ongoing growth and maturity as we yield to um Holy Spirit, um, sanctifying yeah. us through the word of God. And we not grieving him. But if we um neglect um fellowshiping with the Holy Spirit, allowing him to, to teach us the word and we adhering to the principles through the word of God. We lose our position. We are not saved. So essentially, um, it, it does it mean that you're not saved, or does it mean that you lose your fellowship with God? I mean, if if we don't, uh, let me let me let me let me backtrack a little on that question. Okay. I think we, we aren't saved if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and we heal, yield into him. It makes no sense. We, we are not saved. Okay. Because okay. if we are not yielding to him, what we are yielding to then? Or who we are yielding mm -hmm. to? Mm. So so, <laughs> so uh, okay. So let me let me give Mr. Mm. Rochelle a chance because I don't want to. <laughs> this is so good. Hi, Go. so, uh, good night, everyone. Hi. So, uh, what I get is that positional sanctification is when we accept Christ as our savior because he already gave that. That's a given. And progressive sanctification is the steps that we take towards holiness. 
So what I also get from your other points that we lose the position if we abandon. So is it the same as if we turn to a life of sin then that we lose that positional sanctification because we only get that positional sanctification once we accept Christ? Yeah. So it's like, let me see if I can help help it to understand because i see sister margaret also asking the same question in a different yes, yes, way yes. so all right so you're married you have a child with your husband right automatically the husband is going to put the, his name on the child's birth certificate right so if your husband named john brown the child's name is going to be junior brown good Mm -hmm. Junior Brown does not look like the father. He doesn't act like the father. He doesn't talk like the father. He doesn't have any characteristics of the father. No, this is going to make you the father question: Is he really mine or not? Yes. Because yes, he's he has my name on his birth certificate, but nothing that he does looks like me. Looks like perfect. So now he's going to go and request a DNA test because he really needs to know, is this child mine or not? <laughs> so it's the same thing. We come to Christ. He becomes our father and we profess his name. But our walk doesn't look like him. Doesn't our talk true. doesn't look like him. Yeah. We don't resemble him. When we look in the mirror, we don't see Christ. We see ourselves. So now it begs yeah. to... It begs the question, were we really saved from yeah. the get-go? So it's not a matter of, yes, you were saved, but then you lose your salvation. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is the fact that you do not look like Christ, you still do the things that you used to do when you were in sin. It means, therefore, that you might not have been saved from the beginning. Mm. Perfectly said. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, it does. Let's be sure. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, sir. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. So, so this one, I was reading, and I saw ultimate sanctification, and the scripture that they gave was First Thessalonians five verse twenty three, and the the explanation was, um, can somebody look up, look that, look for that scripture for me, please? The explanation that they gave was. That this is the sanctification when we are with Christ Jesus. But I beg to differ. Um, I have the scripture. Okay, can you read it for me? Sure. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At the coming of our Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, we should be blameless. We should allow God, as per scripture, to sanctify us completely, our mind, our body, and our soul. Every day we renew our mind. Our body is a temple of God. We should not do anything to defile the temple of God. So I'm saying that this is entirely sanctified. This... um third point and it's not ultimate sanctification this mm -hmm. is here on earth and not in heaven mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. amen amen i'm saying yeah. amen but i was muted amen amen, amen. amen. <laughs> yes sir yes 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 100 percent hmm. sir listen so <laughs> so <laughs> based on that last point over there that you made I have been saved for 20 years now praise mm. God um, <laughs> and <laughs> who Jesus you're still progressing yes I'm still in the progress <laughs> I'm sorry. In progress. listen I am still in the progressive phase sir oh, after 20 no. years so what mm. if God should put in his appearance tomorrow or tonight? It means mm. that I have failed in some regard because mm. I would not have allowed God to entirely yes. me 
by yes. his Holy Spirit. So yes. when we say be ready so you don't have to get ready, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, because yeah. if yep, God yep, should yep. come tonight, you oh, could still be trying to get ready because I still have a mouth on me that needs a little you, 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 you know I'm still in the, that progressive phase yes oh, I love, I love so mm -hmm. if I'm oh Lord Jesus okay all right okay so <laughs> oh, that's what we're doing oh Jesus okay 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 mm. Mm, my God yes Apostle go ahead we one of the issues that we have with teachings like these hmm. or one of the issues that people have with teachings like these is it makes it seems like we don't give leeway Ooh. to hmm. um person struggling and I want to be clear that that is not what we are talking about because there are people in their faith who um, will struggle with different things at different intervals in their life. Um, and they are seeking ways to love God and be holy as he's holy. Okay, there are new converts as well as there are persons who have been in the faith for a while. Because, listen, Paul says it. Paul said, listen, Paul was the man, basically. Yes, yes. I mean, apart from Jesus, and you all understand what I mean. Yes. And he himself said, listen, the things I don't want to do, I do. Okay? But what Paul was not saying is, I tell the same lies over and 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 over. Mm. That's not what Paul was saying. Okay. Um, what Paul was not saying is um, I'm struggling with the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over with no um, change or shift in my life. Okay. So mm. I want to be very clear that we understand that we are not saying that whether new or old will not have different seasons in their life where they are encountering different struggles. However, when you find, and I'll never forget this pastor, I don't remember his name, but I remember the teaching. Um, he was preaching and he said, if you are saved for over, and he said, 10 years, and he said he was pushing it. But if you're safe for over 10 years, and the what we consider as the basic sins are still what you're struggling with, mm -hmm. then you need to check whether you really are saved. Are saved, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because if you look at it from a natural perspective also, not just spiritual, but if it is that you have a child that after a while um, is not walking, is not talking, then that tells you that there is something Ability. that is... Oh, yes. yes, that is wrong. And right there, you take that child to the doctor, where more likely the doctor is going to reveal to you um, the various things, you know, or the reasons That's why, yeah. right? So therefore, as a child of God, what the man of God is not saying, and I absolutely love how you answered Pastor Kashina. Let me tell you why. Because you could have tried to answer at the beginning, but you knew what you had coming. That is how we teach Bible study. And that's why I'm saying mm -hmm. great job, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you tried to answer earlier, you would have thrown out Yes. Your entire study. Yes. So you you remain calm, knowing, and I, and I figure for you it was hard. Because I figure you're like, oh my God, Pastor Kashina is coming with this question. Yes. But <laughs> it, 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 it showed, 
it showed maturity yes. that yes. I know the information I have. Yes. I understand you, Pastor Cash, mm -hmm. but let me, so if she mm -hmm. now disagrees with this next mm -hmm. slide, yeah. then we can go at it. So I yeah. also want to commend you for that. Amen. But I, I want mm -hmm. us to understand that what the man of God is, is not saying, right, is that um, as a child of God, you might be having um, some things that you might be struggling with. Okay? He's not saying that you're not saved. Okay. He's talking about the very things that two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, and it's the same thing you find yourself doing over and over. Mm -hmm. Let me also say this. If though, you might be a child of God, as Pastor Cass says, for 20 years. And you have refused to allow yourself through progressive sanctification. You might go to heaven, but there's a problem with you. Mm. You ain't getting no crown. Right. And and you can also stop some people from, getting to from entering into heaven mm -hmm. because will be unto you. though mm -hmm. you um though you say you know and, and this is called this is the the statement you know i'm a Work what what's it under construction? Yeah, everybody's everybody yeah, Christian yeah. under construction, mm -hmm. right? So yes, we have to, um, we have to progress, as you say. But again, the important thing is he is not saying that if you have any form of struggle, it means you're not saved. That is not mm -hmm. what he's saying. I wanted to just um. That say that yes yeah. hmm. right. before you move That's on sir there's a question in the chat i think that is probably for you apostle what are basic sins because you mentioned you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. something about being saved for a certain amount of time and still tr struggle <laughs> with basic sins so somebody's asking what do you consider basic <laughs> i'm not sure if i'm the perfect person to answer that you know and the reason why I'd say that is because what people consider as basic things, I think, <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 for me, um, I gossip. It's something that I've struggled with, so I continue to do it mm -hmm. over a period of time. Lies repeatedly over and over and over and over and over. Fornication. Uh, all these are 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 to me basic things that I believe a couple of years ago that's what the enemy used to try with us. No, the enemy not trying these things because we're not it's like the church not struggling with that anymore. The church struggling with pride and <laughs> and, and 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 other you know other things. So these yeah. are some of the things that um we can consider as and I would consider people consider them as basic sins. Uh, I wonder if Pastor Kasha has any she wants to add to that. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> uh, I, I I can't help but think about uh what Paul said about um you know drinking milk and, and maturing onto solid foods. Um, and I understand he was talking about the teaching and the word, um, but even as it relates to like certain habits and certain, um, like Paul said, the sins that eat so easily beset us, so you know, um, yeah. so I, I know for me, I mean, I can't tell you, I have some, uh, <laughs> some things that used to easily beset me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but, um, I find that I don't, I don't, I don't have challenges with those anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, even as 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 simple as worrying, 
and being afraid and being fearful about certain things. I, I don't find myself worrying about stuff anymore. I don't find myself doubting God when it comes to, you know, doing what he, he says he's going to do anymore. Like, so, so that would be basic for me back in the day. I would, I would fret about everything, but no, I don't. And I believe that, like you said, as you, as you, I feel like the, the, the operative word here is progressive. So mm. once there is evidence of progress, yes, you see what I mean? Because we talk about the struggles, but what do we consider a struggle? Because sometimes we, we continue in sin, as Paul mm -hmm. said, that grace may abound and we call it a struggle when mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. fact, it can't be a struggle for five and 10 years. You know what I mean? It's a choice at this point. Right. Um, just like you would say, a mistake is not a mistake after the third time. Yes. You know what I mean? So what do we consider to be a struggle? Mm -hmm. Do I continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So as long as there's evidence of progress, oh, I believe, um, instead of you continuing to do the same thing over and over and over. And for example, I would steal. I'm just using a random example. I would steal, right? I used to be a thief. And mm -hmm. I'm saved for 20 years and <laughs> shut up. And over the 20 years, like in the first five years, I used to steal like every day. And then I start steal like once a week. And then I start steal like once a month, you know? And then I recognize when I, when, when it comes on to that time, once a month and I steal, I recognize it quickly and I, and I deal with it quickly. So, I'm not really stealing anymore. And maybe every every five years, I get into a situation where, you know, I'm tempted to steal and then I recognize it and then 10 years pass and I don't steal anything. That shows some progress. Progress, yes. So it's still a struggle, but I'm not doing it every week or every day anymore. Yes, you know, yes. maybe I was put in a position where my life was threatened and I felt like if, if I didn't steal, then I would die. And 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 then that kind of not that it excuses the sin, yeah. But you can see that in that situation, that is more considered a struggle more than a habit, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my hand raised because as I heard Pastor Cash, something um just jumped out at me. The thing is, I think for each and every one of us, what we consider basic sins might be different right. because um, it, it, it comes back to the things that I yeah, um, are struggling with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if when I got saved, I was a womanizer. Um, and if after however years, I'll not say how many years I've been saved, <laughs> but after how many years of being saved, I find that I still am struggling with it. That I'm still taking milk. Mm -hmm. I'm so still true. taking milk. So it really, again, because it's got a marvel after question, depends on us. Understand when we came into Christ, yeah, what were yeah, what yeah, were the things that the we struggled with? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after this time in Christ, are those the same struggles? It struggles, man. Right? Because mm -hmm. if they are the same struggles, then you're still at basic. You've made no progress. Mm -hmm. You know, because and and some of us then we we are wondering, oh well, I'm not being attacked. Oh Lord, Holy Spirit. Um, I, I don't have those struggles like what Pastor Cash have. You will yes. never because you're still at grade one. Ooh. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. You will never because um Pastor Cash is actually getting a, a PhD struggle. Wow. Period. Doctor Doctor Pastor. So we 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 the we, we, the we are progressing. Yes. <laughs> yes. My God. My God. Because understand this, church. Understand this. That 
the same demon you used to face. And it doesn't mean that he's not coming back, right? He's still there. And that is why that passage in Luke talks about seven stronger spirits. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. It's not the yep, same the old spirit right, comes, comes back. He comes, mm -hmm. he looks, he recognizes his place is there, right? But remember, remember you got rid of him before. Right. So he doesn't trust himself. Mm -hmm. trying to secure so his he spot. goes ah in mm -hmm. order to secure his spot he goes for seven mm -hmm. the bible did not say seven like mind mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it says seven stronger than himself mm -hmm. yes. so now you become worse mm -hmm. you understand so when we talk about basic sins it really is relevant to the individual, yeah. right? And what are the things that you yourself, you know, have struggled with? And do you see any progression to move away mm -hmm. from them? Mm -hmm. If you now I heard Pastor Ka said something, and I, I'm not going to, it's not that I'm disagreeing with her, but I want to say be careful. If for 20 years you're stealing every week, and now 20 years after you're still stealing every year. Um, Something is um, still fundamentally wrong. Yes. Oh, I agree yes. with that. Yes. Yes. There is. There is. So I, 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 I used to gossip every day, and now I only gossip every month. Gossip is still a scene no, still on the wrong. holiday. Yes. Yes. You understand? So, no, I, I, I understand, and that's what I'm saying. You know, it's not I don't want to, because it's the same thing we can say, well, Pastor, the truth is I used to speed at 120, now I'm only going 100. 100. It's still speeding. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So yeah. it, 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 is, it, is, it is very important we understand. We are not trying to throw anybody or saying that as Christians, there are not struggles. Mm. There are struggles. Yeah, but absolutely. where is your progression or, pro or being progressive in, in, um, in, 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 in trying to ensure rather than that this this doesn't happen. You understand? Right. Hence, positional salivation like, cannot be enough. Yes. Progress mm -hmm. Yes. Progressive plays yes. a vital role in us being set apart for the will of God. Yes, Sister Rochelle. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, definitely it does. It does. Amen. Amen. Sir, you have another hand before you move on, teacher. Uh, Fiona's hand is up. <clears throat> right, Sister Fiona. Uh, yeah, on the point of like this present conversation, I wanted to also add that um, based on what Pastor Cash had said about, you know, 20 years ago when you got saved, this, that, and the third, um, there is, based on what you said previously, uh, Pastor Michelle, um, that we play a role in the sanctification just as mm -hmm. much as Jesus plays a role in the sanctification yes. mm -hmm. and um based on that we know that there are as you continue to grow as you continue to pray as you continue to read the word and all of that as you continue to commune with the holy spirit the holy yes. spirit taking um pl uh, i guess like residence in your heart and in your life will then begin to convict you of certain mm -hmm. things so there's yes. no way if you are in daily communion for 20 years of salvation that you're never going to be convicted to mm -hmm. stop stealing or you're never going to be convicted to stop gossiping and so on and so um as you said you know it's it's a daily it's a daily process of course but there are some things that in a certain sense are kind of inexcusable after a certain amount of time yes. um and so um, I just wanted to point that out as well. Like, yes, it's a process, but also processes come to an end. There is no unending process that exists. Otherwise, it would not be a process. <laughs> a process, amen. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Michelle, that's the reason why the church is where it's at. Yeah. Because we have been allowing same things to go over and over. Over and over. And we stop addressing it and we say, don't worry, they're working on it. 
Mm. Um, don't worry, they're young. Don't worry, you know, they'll get it. And mm. nobody gets to the place where we say, it is wrong, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, it, yeah. It, okay, <laughs> okay, all right, I'm trying, stop. Yeah. Stop. That's it. Yes, I, yes. I, I remember a couple of years ago, I had a camp and the theme was just do it like Nike. Just do it. Stop, stop, stop the, and again, I, I'm okay with, I'm making the effort. I'm not saying we don't say that, but when it is consistently, oh, I'm trying, I'm making the effort, I'm trying. At some point, and again, I always come with this. Tell your boss that you're trying to make him a profit mm -hmm. for 15 years and tell me that you still have your same your job. <laughs> or better yet, not even your job. Let your husband or your wife say, Hon, I'm I'm doing my best to to stop cheating. Um mm -hmm. it's just a process. Okay. Tell me that you're still in this marriage and you're still being faithful and you're still trusting. Um, tell me, if you can tell me that, well, you know, it, it, there has to come a point where we can lift our hands and say, Lord, and this might sound cliche, it's not my will. Yes. It's not my will, Lord. It's your will and your way. Okay, completely. No, no, no matter what, it's just what you say. And when we can get to that place, yes, there might be a day, four days I've said not my will, and there might be the fifth day that now the devil knows he can't come the same way. Mm. So he he comes another way, and because Maybe I didn't see. Maybe I, I, I fell. But guess what? Guess what? Because I have been victorious over, guess what? That one fall doesn't keep me down. Right. You understand? Right. Because I look back at how triumphant God has been in my life. So I pick myself up. And now I put that, that what the devil thinks, I put it up on the board that, Okay, now I'm gonna look out for this. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, so, and I really, I mean, I am going over this point because I don't want anyone to misunderstand thinking we're saying that we don't have shortcomings. We all have shortcomings. Okay, but we cannot make our shortcomings crutches, so that instead of going to the doctor, taking the meds, and get healed. We're walking on crutches for the rest of our lives mm -hmm. and saying, oh, I'm injured. I'm injured. Yeah. Man, let's take away your crutches. Then, but anyway, yes. Uh, if I could say just one last thing. Um, may I? Um, after Pastor Cash and Nicole. Oh, okay. sure. Yes. So I think it was Pastor Cash first, then Sister Nicole. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Um, thank you, sir. Um, I, I, I'm just piggybacking off of what Apostle said because, you know, yes, we're not trying to convey a message that we're perfect and we don't have issues, but at the same time, the truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, we have to become radical when it comes to certain things, and I will not apologize for that. And I know, you know, we're not apologizing for that. Um. If you have poison in your house and you know that if you drink the poison, you're going to die. Are you going to gradually take small sips until you lose the appetite for the poison? No. And maybe yeah. get sick a little but not die? <laughs> or are you going to just <laughs> take the bottle of poison and throw it out oh, yeah. and call it quits? Yeah. Some things are basic, simple common sense no mm -hmm. get me because i've been in a place where i've had things that i struggle with so i understand the struggle 
But I've also been in a place where when I look at the struggle, I recognize, listen, Kashina, you have to take this thing and do away with it, close that yeah. door, and deal with the symptoms later. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Because Jesus is not going to come down from heaven and take the thing away from me and slap me on my hand and say, don't do it again. I yes. have to get rid of it. I have to get up out of my chair, yeah. take the thing, throw it out, light it, burn it with fire, close mm -hmm. the door, and then maybe go inside and cry afterward. Fine. Mm -hmm. but, but at the end of the day mm -hmm. like you said we have a role to play in our progressive sanctification and mm -hmm. we cannot pray about everything and expect that God is going to come and fix it Jesus we yeah. have to be radical yeah. and <laughs> make some radical choices to rid ourselves and that is why the Bible says put away the sin that so easily beset you not pray about it not fast about it, not try to put it away, but put away the things that so easily beset us. It's sometimes it just oh. it, it comes down to simple decision making and discipline. Something. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to say that. And like the apostle said, if you if you can't do it by yourself, grab somebody. And that is why we are here. Grab somebody and say, listen, I want to get rid of this thing. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at it together. That's it. Sister Nicole? Yes, um, good night. So I good just night. wanted to, 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 to say that, you know, our desires and our, you know, our propensity to sin, I think it comes from a lack of relationship and a lot and I think I heard um Fiona said something similar. You know, the more we spend time with God, the more we really fellowship and spend time in our presence. You know, it's it's harder for us to, to delight in sin. Yes. The, 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 sin the, the the man that is in the world, him, he's he's fine. Nothing happens on him sin. Him feel good, him boasts about it. But us who are the spirit of Christ, you know sis, if we do something that's outside of the liking of God right away, that conviction, but really and truly we can't have the conviction if we're far from Christ. You know, um, John 1, 6 says, um, if we say we have fellowship with him, yet we're still walking in darkness and we're telling a lie, you know, we really don't have no fellowship with him. We more so have it with darkness. That is why you know, mm -hmm. it comes easy to us to continue comes easy to us to to kind of wallow and say in that on a regular basis and get up and do it every day. Still, you know, our love for Christ and our closeness to him is one of the things that is going to help to push us away from those sinful desires that is, you know, keeping us down. Yes, Amen. thanks for that. Amen. 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 Sister Phil, you're, you're still on the point? Yeah, wait, no, the uh, apostle said it in the chat. I was just going to give some practical um, examples as to how we can get past certain things because we're saying a lot of, you know, just make a decision, make a decision, which is true, we should, but also sometimes we need extra help and accountability. So that's all I was going to add. Practical example, that sounds like homework, don't it? <laughs> My bad teacher. I'm so sorry. It's a teacher. <laughs> All right, so let's move. Wow. So what is involved in the sanctification process? Um and for us to do that, let us dive into the old testament a little. Mm -hmm. Sister Phil, you can, you, can read, you can read for us, please. Sure. So Give me it's one from verses to 1 to 33, but okay. we're not reading it entirely. We're stopping at some um, checkpoints. Okay, so I'll listen for your cues. Uh, Exodus 29. The ESV version, preferably. Yes, that's what I it's have. The steps taken to sanctify Aaron and his son. 
a man after my own heart. Yes, please. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Right. Um, should I go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. Take one bull of the herd and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers smeared with oil. You shall make them of fine wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket and bring the bowl and the two rams. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the, te the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Uh, can you stop right there? Mm -hmm. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and do what? Wash them Sun. with water. Mm. Ceremony. Um. <laughs> This mm -hmm. signifies baptism. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead. This is good. Go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. Can you read Acts 22, verse 16? Apostle, can I resign now? No, no, please. Go ahead. We sing and terminate that, that statement. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> Any version? And now, why Tarius thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? Mm. Yeah. Cleanse yourself, right? Yeah. Yes. Now we know baptism to be a public declaration. Yes, that you have accepted Christ. Yes. Out to the old. In with the new. The new. The new. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shooks. Sister, uh, continue. Okay. Yes. Then you shall take the garments and put on Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastpiece and gird him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. Yes, stop and you right shall. Here. Okay. Yes. Can you read verse 5 again one more time? Sure. Then you shall take the garments and put on Aaron the coat and the rod, the, sorry, the coat and the robe of the ephod, and the ephod and the breastpiece, and gird him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. Clothed with garments. The, mm. the priest's attire had to be what? Different, yes. Mm -hmm. Gotta look right. talking about the priest. We're talking about mm -hmm. the priest, right? Mm -hmm. Can somebody read first Peter? Not you, Fiona, because you're still with Exodus 29. Yeah, can mm -hmm. somebody read first Peter 2, verse 9? Everybody complaining says, about it, but, still wants but he are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy Ooh. nation, a peculiar mm -hmm. people that he should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are a what? Priest. A royal yes. priest. Mm -hmm. Royal. Mm -hmm. Royal. When we come to church, we must look. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh-oh. Wow. When we go into work, we must look. Oh, yes. my God, my God, my God. We're, like talking a royal We're talking about sanctification here. No breast leg and tie. Okay. Period. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This man chose violence tonight. I In can't me. believe you did it. He went there. He went there. Therefore, if we are a royal priesthood, Oh it my God! That mm. even the way how we put ourselves together is important to show we have been a set apart. Set apart. Mm. Yeah, Amen. There, all the way there. Wow. Let's let's hear what Second Corinthians five verse seventeen says. Pastor Mas, before you go, um, mm. I, I kind of know what you're trying to do in seeing us. That's why that try to yes. put it at the bottom of the screen. You can actually pull it, pull it to the bottom underneath the um underneath your wording. 
So and see if that will help you. Sorry, no, you're not going to miss up the presentation, man. Um, <laughs> yes, right there. Oh, that's perfect. So you're you're fine. So you still see us down there. Yeah. Yes. The only problem you have is what if your slide go all the way yeah, down, go there, down there. Put yeah, it up to the top. Then you're gonna have to put it up at the top. <laughs> Just drag it up to the top. I'll put it all the way up to the top. Because we're all I, we're I, all I, learning. That's okay. Yeah, all the, go up go up a little higher. Go a little higher. Yes, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right, perfect. So, uh, one of the things that I was listening to, like as you were saying, the priestly attire, um, and you read that scripture in First Peter, um, then our priestly attire is an everyday thing, not just even when we enter into the temple on or the church on a Sunday because we are walking billboards and if we really are royal priesthoods then we should dress like that every day. Yes. Every place that we walk. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Definitely woman of God. So I have a question. Oh my right. here we go. <laughs> because if that's the case, does that mean that if I am going to the beach, I need to wear uh, oh. a jean skirt and a white t shirt. <laughs> yes. Because, because if, if if we're saying if if based on what we're saying, and this is a question, a very important question. Um, yes, does that is. mean yeah, does that mean that I need to um yeah, you know cover yourself? Yes. Cover up myself completely at the beach. Well, you can put on your nice swimsuit and put on a covering over it while you're over walking. It. Yes. Yeah. Because a swimsuit, and then we, we, we kind of want to think about the swimsuit too, because as a as a priest or a, you know, and a child of God, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to wear a a, a thong. Right. A thong swimsuit. What is that? What's that? Google it, Sister Opa. Right? So, like, exactly. while you're walking on the beach, they have very nice cover ups mm -hmm. that are in, looks nice. You still can, you know, do your thing mm -hmm. and still look good and enjoy yourself. And when it's time yes. to go in the water, you can take it off and jump in the water and do your thing and whatever. So, I feel like, not I feel. As this, the, the scripture talks about doing things decently and in order and doing everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yes, you can still wear your swimsuit, but you, you, or you can put a shorts over it until you're ready to swim. Mm -hmm. While you're walking, while you're laying on the beach, you can put on a shirt, you know, choose your swimsuit wisely instead mm -hmm. of a, a string and a whatever, you, you know, you, you put on something that looks appropriate for mm -hmm. a woman of God. Mm -hmm. So even when somebody see you at the beach, them can still say, pastor, minister, mm -hmm. Intercessor, you know, they don't yeah. have to look at your with the side eye. Not the side eye. True, true. Okay, so, huh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I, okay, I wore a nice two piece. Um, well, not me, I'm talking for the female. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, really? Um, awesome. And then I mean I I had on the shorts, took off the shorts, went into the water. Um, but no, we're taking pictures and I'm gonna post these pictures. Um it's my bad suit, it's my picture. Um why do you have a problem with it? Because it's not like I was walking on the street with it. Well we talked um, about preventing people from lost things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see where you're heading, sir. Mm -hmm. So we, the thing is, we <laughs> we are okay with everybody else when it doesn't affect us. Mm -hmm. When it affects home, mm -hmm. that's where we 
We now <laughs> have an issue. Yeah. 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 You don't have so, any because so so and that's why I'm asking these questions, right? You realize I haven't said what I believe. I'm asking these questions. Um, but beach is for um beach wear. Right. You know, <laughs> so why is it that um I need to look like everybody else when this is beach and I'm not, you know, necessarily doing anything wrong. Um, you know, I bought this. I well, think it looks nice. Um, and as I said, you know, yeah, I might have the shorts. Um, but, you know, as you said, I go in the water, I take my pictures and then for now, what everybody does, it's, it's post. Mm -hmm. Why are these things mm -hmm. so, why are they so wrong? Really? <clears throat> so those are or are they wrong mm -hmm. right um, why are they wrong or are they wrong um, so those are the, some questions that um, and I know time is, is going I don't know how far the man of God is going to reach but so yeah Trish, that's a question um, I know I see <laughs> one hand Neo is up Sister Trish did you have your hand up did you still want to say something um no it's okay okay all right so you have one hand up sir teacher yeah go ahead you're muted last time Neil struggled with unmuting you know so <laughs> um it took a while so i can um, i can probably ask um until Yes, oh, he's on me. Yes. And then All right. Hi, guys. Good night. Hello. Uh, I must say I'm blessed by this Bible study as, as per normal. I just wanted to probably just add something that I think um, may help uh, to bring a little bit more clarity to what has been said. And that is, um, if we were to look at John 17, it says, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, but hmm. it does not see him, nor does it know him, but hmm. ye know him. For he abides with you and shall be in you. A lot of the struggles that we have, I think, is because we have not yet embraced the Holy Spirit in, the, in his fullness. He's yes. supposed to be a teacher and a helper. And we have to learn obedience to him. And notice I, I, I said learn, basically, because it's in the word where it says Jesus learned obedience when it was time for the cross, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But I think that when we get to the place where we're fully yielded to the Holy Spirit, a lot of the things that we struggle with will become easier because that, that's a part of his role. And mm -hmm. I think that also in embracing him, he takes you through the channels and the processes, like we said before about sanctification, for us to fully understand what it takes to remain sanctified and also remain holy. I think that sometimes when we make a change based on our own determination, we often find that we fall right back into it because we never went through the channels of understanding it via the Holy Spirit so that then yeah. we can actually master it and then teach others how to function and also to adapt that principle of yielding to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Thank God. Yes. Yeah. Right. The nail on the head was a person. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 I was, I was just going to add to it um, two things. One, I, I remember when I first joined Kingdom Builders and I entered into the church and I, I'm, I was so used to growing up in the American culture where you showed up in jeans and t-shirt and leggings and all that wonderful stuff. Um, and Pastor Kosh really led me through the reason why we don't wear those things um and for me that was such a learning experience and I it recognized the depth of it when I went with her and we did not realize we were going to church and I wore my jeans with holes in them um and I showed up and I thought we were going to somebody's house and we ended up in church and I felt <laughs> so uncomfortable and I had never felt that uncomfortable before and for the first time I was recognizing the depth 
as to why we dressed that way and how much of an impact that made um, on me. And um, the other example I was going to give was at work, uh, we have a lot of women that become, you know, get to know God while they're there. And I was teaching a class on um, respecting ourselves and respecting who we are and identifying who we are as as women. And yeah. I remember we started talking about our clothing and walking around and one girl raised her hand and she goes, Tara, why are you always so modestly dressed? Um, and I was just like, wow, I, I like, I never really thought about that. Um, when she said it and then I, we had this great conversation, but it's a representation and people are really watching and it's so important. Amen. 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 Sister Trish. The nail was hit. So I'm I'm oh. I'm okay. <laughs> the nail went all the way through. All the way through. Right. <laughs> so so we can so we can stop here, Apostle. The last um point on this slide is it was after the washing, the cleansing or the baptism. They were clothed with the garments to look different from the others. Oh my, God. Wow. Mm. my God. Yeah. Mm. My God. Wow. Amen, amen. amen and amen. 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 So let it be. This was real good. Yeah. Oh